Hi, we've got uh, Roger and Jurg here. We're at the uh, ACSM annual meeting. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, MOXIE and near-infrared spectroscopy. Uh, so maybe we can start out, Jurg, with uh, just tell us a little bit about how you got started with near-infrared spectroscopy. Sure. Uh, the main step was to figure out something I can use as a, as a therapist with my patients, but also as a, as a coach of, in my lifetime, but potentially also other coaches who would just like to work a little bit more intense with athletes on an individual basis. So uh, my interest was always to take one patient or one athlete at a time and see what can I do as a team with you if you would be my athlete mm -hmm. and I would be your coach. So I hated the answer, uh, sorry Roger, this is your genetic limitation, that's all sure. I can get out of you. Uh, my idea was to say, well, it's not the goal to win a race, it's the goal is to bring the personal best out of you with sure. what nature gave you, the time you have available and the commitment you like to give to certain sports or to a certain kind of health related uh, action. Okay. And from that point, I was looking since yeah, now over 35 years, what equipment is on the market I can use simple and I can afford, because often money is one of the limiting factors. Sure. And in that, in that step to find that way, I spent actually too much money. I spent so much money I had to say, well, that's the wrong way. I mean, I started out classically like everybody's doing in exercise physiology, buying a VO2 equipment. Okay. And there we have cheaper ones from around ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 up to as much money as you like to spend. Uh, and I needed that to get a little bit deeper in to see how do I make a difference between A and B. So instead of searching for an absolute number like a VO2 max, which we know since many years it's not a, that great of an idea, but it was an idea nevertheless, I was wondering whether I seen a VO2 mach max machine more. So I was looking on breathing, I was looking on a whole bunch of other ideas. Okay. Uh, and then I realized there's a lot of missing. So we added automatically lactate testing with it and with small portable lactate analyzers. We are actually proud to brought them over to North America. We added some blood values to it. And it gave us a lot more answers, but also opened a heck of a lot more questions. Okay. So after we spent more money on an additional equipment, we were, had to look for another equipment uh, to find more inf information. So I met a company from, uh, from the Netherlands, Artinis, who had this incredible, nice uh, near-infrared equipment on the market, uh, but far out of a budget for what my dream would have been. Sure. But I had to buy it because it, it is the next combination we were looking for. Okay. And then I met another guy, Frank Boer, uh, who is an absolute genius in his field, who had that incredible equipment, which was again adding some money, a uh, non-invasive assessment of cardiac output. Okay, so, so let me summarize here. So, so you've, you, have, uh, you have blood lactate, you have VO2 max, you have non-invasive cardiac output, and you have near-infrared spectroscopy. And now, and now you're seeing what you want to see. No, then we added another $15,000 machine, which was a Surface EMG. Okay, okay. Uh, and now we had this huge amount of data, which yep. were incredibly interesting. And we opened the whole box of more questions. But we also got a completely new idea how the physiological system works. 